we do have two guests coming up in a very short space of time. We were going to kind of say, well, we won't know, tell you who they are because it's, it's great fun to have these people on. But let's, let's tell you now because you can go and tell other people that you've got, who you, that you know who's going to be on the show. So we have at around half past five, we have two Don's midfield players. We have Anthony Wordsworth and Jack Rodoni coming to us live. They're not together either. Uh, in separate houses. So Anthony and Jack will be on the show for probably about an hour or so. And Anthony is a huge fan of WWE, apparently. So shame Nick's not on today's show. However, some of you may have seen um, Anthony's new facial um, sculpting. He shaved his beard off for the first time since I remember him being a footballer. And he has a very, very Freddie Mercury-esque moustache. So I think we're going to be talking about, about that. Now, <clears throat> um, are there any questions or anything people have sent in, Stu, already, even though you've only been going a few minutes? No, I just think, we, no, not, nothing major. Um, Zach Thompson says, afternoon, gentlemen. Even though technically it would be morning for Zach over in the US of A, I would have thought. Uh, uh, Lee, right? No, Stu. Is it not? <laughs> oh, no, of course, it's only five hours, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's just midday. It's just midday. It's the, the East Coast is four hours behind until Sunday when they are then five hours behind. Ah. So we have just, um, we've got about 22 what, uh, listeners at the moment. Um, here we got uh, Zach Thompson's in. Like I say, I think Kevin is reading comments from yesterday's live stream. Uh, Gareth Hayward is here. Um, and Robert Boyce. So, yeah. And Lee Rumbelow. Yeah, hey, Lee. Loads of people uh, in. And like I say, we have Zach, I'm sorry, we have um, Rudy and Andy coming in. So if you want to just tweet your friends or let your friends know or, you know, think someone who want to listen to it, let them know. It should be fun this afternoon. <clears throat> well, we're going to be playing games with them. I mean, <laughs> it just seems strange for someone of my age to be playing games with people of their age. But still, it's, it'll be fun. We've got three separate games. We do have, of course, the, the extraordinarily successful uh, quiz, Paul Oss Who, which we're not allowing George to take part. So Mark Hendricks will be running Paul Oss Who today. And we'll be, we aren't taking part. The players are taking part. <clears throat> we also have a great bit of fun game um, that, that Stu has put together, which I'm still laughing at now. If you're old enough, or maybe as old as me, you might remember the quiz show, Mr. and Mrs. But um, everyone, there's a few people, George shaking his head. No, Mr. and Mrs. was uh, hosted by probably one of the best TV hosts of all time, Derek Beatty. So couples, married couples, they would have a quiz about each other, what they like, their favourite things, but what the, the answers... They would be, one of them would be in a, in a sealed box, pretty much. And then they'd answer questions and they'd come back. And they, the, what, the, the couple that knew the most about each other was the winner. We're doing that with Jack Rodoni and Anthony Wordsworth. So what have we called it, Stu? Um, I don't know. I was thinking about a name. I couldn't think of anything really sort of, I feel like maybe, who are you? Um, maybe. Who, football, who the of. hell do you think you are? I think I quite like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a Spice Girls thing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Um... But yeah, it's basically Mr. and Mrs., isn't it? Um, so, I, see, that's how your brain works. So I was thinking, who who do you think you are? Was the the genealogy show where people find out about their history? You immediately think of the Spice Girls. Yeah, because I can remember the video. We can all remember the video, Steve. It's not quite yeah. as upfront in our, our minds as it is for you. Really. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. <clears throat> now, the one thing we've been talking about every day this week is this is the fourth show. Um, and we've been talking about various things. We're not going to get too heavy about this virus, but it is, of course, playing a huge part in our lives because we all know each other through football and there ain't no football. Um, impact on contractors is what we're going to talk about today. So, George, you are probably the person who follows the kind of contracts and the players' welfare in amongst us more than anybody else. So what can you give us? Any insight on impacts on the contracts of the players because due to the contracts are due to run out on the 30th of june now we don't know whether there's going to be any games before then probably not by the look of it so you can't have a player because if a player signed a pre-contract with another club in january he becomes their player on the first of july so they can't play for us or any other team they've left so where does this leave us currently George? this is one of those weird situations of if the season follows the non-league and we end up going out and not finishing this season then it won't be a huge impact because players will see to the end of their contracts on June 30th, they'll see them out they'll be able to join a new club on the 1st of July and join in with the new season assuming that starts in either August or September the problem is going to be if our season gets extended into July or even beyond maybe even into August and September itself 
then we've got a major problem because, like Kevin said, contracts end on June 30th. That means players, some of whom we know, have already signed contracts to join other teams on July 1st. What happens with those deals? What happens on pay contracts for existing players? And you'll have players who would have provisionally agreed to sign new contracts at our club and others in June, which means that they would either see a pay increase or maybe even a pay decrease to continue to stay at our club. And that means that those contracts, would they be valid here or would they not be valid whenever the season actually ends up finishing? This is something that FIFA are looking into at the moment. They're due to release a paper in the next couple of days, which should give some clarity on this as to whether the contracts will be valid as the spirit of the contract, i.e. contracts are valid until whenever the season ends, or are they just going to be finishing on June 30th and clubs will have to just try and work out, you know, how are they going to manage it? How are they going to guarantee these players stay and play for clubs, you know, going on to whenever the season actually finishes? Yeah. And you've also got the added complication of players who the clubs might not to, not even want to retain until the end of the season. And are the clubs forced to keep these players on or can they release them and save themselves a wage? And I think that's the main thing that we're going to have to look at. And it's why it's such an interesting point because, it's going to have a major impact on the future of our club, the future of every <clears throat> club in the football league, yeah. their finances. And it's just going to be really interesting to see how this develops. Well, the, the other thing, of course, is that there are, I'm not going to name any players or any clubs here, but there are clubs who will, who are facing relegation, who are probably thinking, right, if we're going to, so let's, let's just say Southend, right? Let's just pick Southend. I wasn't going to name a team. Let's say Southend pretty much nailed on to go down, right? Have the season finished. They must be looking at their player contracts and the player wages and the whole wage bill, thinking, OK, so next season we haven't got Portsmouth, we haven't got Sunderland, we haven't got Ipswich. We've got much, much smaller crowds coming for less attractive games. Their top earners who are out of contract will not be kept on because they can't afford to. Now maybe they're going to have to keep them because they may not be relegated. So I don't know who Southend's top paid player is. It was Simon Cox, but whoever that is, Maybe if he's out of contract now, what happens now? Hasn't Simon Cox gone to uh, the yeah. Australia? Yeah. He certainly went yeah. abroad somewhere, yeah. So <clears throat> whoever, whoever it is now, if that player's contract isn't up, they're going to have to keep them. And they can't, they can't afford it. They're budgeting. And we're obviously, our club, and things, us and Tranmere and Rochdale, budgeting for staying up or going down. South End are not budgeting to stay up. No chance. As crazy as it sounds, for me, I really have this this gut feeling that everything is going to hit pause. And you say about contracts ending or whatever, I think everything's going to pause for a couple months, so everything's going to be a couple months delayed. This is provided that the upward curve of this virus kind of hits within the next month. Um, And then we're going to basically play catch-up over two, three years. Yeah, I mean, that's how it could end up happening. Then you've got a problem of contracts. Can you actually force somebody to sign a new contract for two or three Mm. months? And I think legally that's very difficult. You've got players... If they don't, they'll be out of... of They won't be playing. They can't play for more than two clubs in a season. Yeah, but those players... But you've got players who might sign pre-existing pre-contract agreements with other clubs that come into right. effect on yeah, July. Yeah, but that that surely will be stipulated as at the beginning of the the the, 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 the season, the following season. But that that's what FIFA are looking into. Do contracts mean the end of the season, and that just happens to be June thirtieth, or are they enforceable on June thirtieth and July first? And that logic what, dictates that, though, right? Well, yeah, well, but that's so the thing. It's a question of you know. Everything. Yeah, yeah, logic versus law, and that's why it's such an interesting situation. And it's going to be one of those things that does have to be decided fairly soon because teams are budgeting for next year. And also, can you force the club to hold on to a player they don't want to for another three months, as Kevin said, in case it's a very high earner? Because all clubs have high earners that they might be looking to move on in the summer. Can you be forced to hold on to them for another three months? And you know That could have a major impact on clubs' budgets for the coming season. It's interesting what you say, George, actually, law versus um, logic. That's a very good way of putting it. Because realistically, whatever the league do, they're going to have to make sure they have some legal um, or it's contractually something. Because we all know know lawyers are going to be heavily involved in this. We've already got Barrow, who 
Um, they're worried now. That, you know, there's a story today. They spent 800,000 this season. Um, and their manager's basically saying they might have just blow it up in, blow it up in smoke. Yeah. Um, burn it because it's a waste of money. So they're already talking about lawyers getting involved. This is Barrow. Like, a lawyer's probably never set foot in Barrow before. So um, that would be fun for them. But I think this is the problem. You're right, Mark. Logic would, you know, or some sort of morals or stuff like that. But I think it's such a dodgy game because mon when money's involved, um, yeah. lawyers get involved and stuff like that. You so, know what's astounding yeah. is over here in Switzerland, um, everyone has just gone, all right, we're just going to pause. And no one's talking about what we are here in this chat. No one's talking about what's going to happen about the possibility. Everyone's kind of taken it as granted that what's going to happen is every, and we're all in this together. We're all going to have to somehow just go, right, all right, let's crack on with this in two, three months' time. So therefore, as said, let's say that the, the, the season continues from May, right? All the players whose contracts end in June or whatever, they're going to continue just on an ad hoc, continue, crack on with that <clears> until uh, July, August at the time. The season, the following season will then start a little later. Now, how they're going to deal with that over here in Switzerland is bizarre because over here in Switzerland, you've got your uh, winter break. Um, so how they're going to play around that, I have no idea, but... Just going to say very quickly, I'm very busy on the chat at the moment, but Mark Jones just got some very good points, actually. Um, he's basically saying with the contracts, is actually the contracts um, have a fixed date. They're dated. Um, but saying everyone that it, is in the same boat, mate, everyone is in yeah, the same boat, yeah, yeah. everyone's going to have they, to just agree to they, it. But it's, but it's still a contract. Sorry, George, it's just to say it's still a contract. Um, that's where we have to think about that. And basically what he just went on to say as well is you'd extend if you wanted, offer short-term extensions. But you can't get a player on his deal his, once his deal is over. And also, you can only trigger a year, not trigger a few months. So, you know, like normally have a year a plus one year option, don't they? Yeah. I think you're right. You're right. But I think when you look at contracts, players, some players will be quite happy to kill their contract off and go somewhere else. Um, some yeah, but they won't be able to play happy. anywhere else because they won't be registered with the other club. Maybe so, a new season. Mm. Precisely. Bit, so therefore, the let's say, not... let's say, as a perfect example, sorry, name me one person quickly, anyone, whose contract is expiring in the summer. Scott Wagstaff. Okay, Scott Wagstaff. He leaves us uh, in 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 uh, uh, June, but the season's still got another couple, uh, three, four weeks, let's say, until end of July even to go. So Scott then says, right, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm out of here. We'll go by Wimbledon. And then he can't join anyone else because he's not registered with that other club because the season is still continuing. But why would a player in that situation risk getting injured or a suspension or something in three weeks of their season, which could impact them getting a club later in the summer? But they can say that, you can say that for any normal season, no? And, and that's true. That's why players are expiring contracts tend to not play in the last couple of weeks if they know they're leaving and if the club is willingly letting them leave. And we're in this situation now where, let's say it was Scott Wagstaff and let's say he had a deal agreed to go with another League One team or a, you know, a, a good League One team, they might say to him, we want you to leave your contract at the end of June, miss the last month of the season to make sure you're fit and ready to go when the season restarts in September or October. Well, then and he would have decided to have left anyway. So... It makes no difference then. In just yeah, my but that, but absolute... that's you, you can't force a player to stay and play for those last months more than he's already contracted for. And that's going to be a major disadvantage to smaller teams because the bigger teams can offer players a big pay increase for the last four weeks to make sure they stay in, to help them achieve promotion or help them stay up. But it's the smaller teams who can't give them any bonus, can't give them any increase. They're the ones who are going to struggle to try and match you know, the big teams and keep themselves with the squad they've got now. Just going to say, quickly, Mark Jones um, in fine form. Great. Thanks for having you on board, Jonesy. Um, basically saying, we've seen Glenn staying today already that his staff are looking at transfers. They carry on as normal with games and use what players they have, in his opinion. Um, and basically just, basically going on here, the season won't matter. Deals are not game-based. Um, and he said, with respect, Mark, you're just getting confusing with that. I'll let you speak with Jonesy. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You know what? Jonesy is right. I am confusing it, but maybe I'm not confusing it by just keeping it as simple as, <laughs> simple as anything. I suppose but my I'm, thinking is, yeah. I suppose my thinking is also very quickly, it's also the club could use it to their own advantage. So if I want to say, I don't know, name player, I'm not going to name a player, I don't want to jinx it. 
But player A gets injured. I don't know how they're going to get injured and doing nothing at home. But just say for instance, like, they pick up a hamstring tear, doing too much work. They could be injured when actually the contract runs out. If that's a high earner, the club might not actually not want them. So, do you know what I mean? I think there's, there's two ways you can look at it. You know, the club don't have a responsibility to carry on the contract. Does a player have a responsibility to carry on where they want to be? I think the thing is, we've never come across this before. Um, we're all literally just shooting in the dark, aren't we? Um, and it's a, the problem is when there's so much money involved, not so much in League One, but going up high in the Premiership. Like, I look at a story today that um, Atletico Madrid are making people like redundant. Um, and even the, even the transfers now, they're looking to cut back. Barcelona have been in discussions about cutting salaries. That's a massive reset button for the whole industry. Yeah. Well, apparently yeah. Bar- Barcelona, apparently, eventually, um, they will, the players will get a reduced salary this month, even before they've agreed terms. I don't know how that works, because that's surely a breach of contract when you, you're not technically playing on the full salary. But there's a lot of clubs that have spent a lot of money, and all of a sudden their income streams have literally disappeared overnight. But, so... Uh, I think what we're going to see on the back of this is in the longer term, more players will have more incentive-based contracts. So they might have a lower basic wage, but a higher increase pay as you play or more goal bonus to make up for it. Because I don't think clubs are going to be willing to take on the risks that they've been exposed to now. Clubs are going to have to learn from this and make sure that if this does happen at any point in the future, they're protected with either having protections in contracts about mandatory wage reductions when games are not being played or having incentive, more incentive-based contracts, because with very high flat wages, it's an unsustainable injury at the best of times, let alone now when there's no games being played. And I think that's going to have to be something that the industry yeah. will learn from. And this is something where if the industry deals with this properly and professionally, we could come out of this in a better place as a, as a group and as a footballing community, because we could be more sustainable because of this, and we might <coughs> see into the hyperinflation we're currently seeing in wages. Yeah, but you, you look at how much players, some players in the Premiership <clears throat> earn, um, and it's just, it's unimaginable money, where the average, I think the average wage in the UK for an adult is 20, is it 24,000, 25,000 a year? Not an enormous amount of money. Um, and the is that average, including Wales and Scotland? Yes, that's, yeah, UK. <coughs> I don't know what the average wage is for a Premiership player anymore. But you look at Arsenal have... Arsenal did at one point have a wage cap. Um, they have five players on their books that earn more than a quarter of a million pounds a week. A week! I mean, none of us are gonna, ever going to earn a million pounds a year. And, and these people are earning a million pounds a month. That's just, I mean, Ozil's on £376,000 um, a month, which I believe is half a million euros a month. And you look at... And he's not even the highest paid player. I'm not saying Man United, the highest paid player, doesn't even play for him anymore. Alexis Sanchez, £600,000 a week. So he earns £2.4 million every month. And you think he does the same job, although better, than somebody who plays for Macclesfield, who's probably on, what, 500 Maybe? It's, yeah, I know, and I know, yeah. You can't compare, but it's just the amount of money in football is obscene. And maybe this is some, as, you, as we talk about reset buttons, maybe this is the way forward. Stu? Yeah, I just to say, again, the, the chat's very... Um... I think it's causing quite a few debates here, which is good. Um, again, Jonesy just asked a very good question, actually, in terms of and one that I've been thinking about recently. He's got, here's one, will players get the 80% government deal if they are not working? You just said about um, Sanjay being on 600,000. Mm. That's a lot of money on 80%. Not bad, is it? I, I would take 80% of that a year, in 10 years. Be lovely. <laughs> but I think the main thing is that government thing, if my understanding is correct, that's limited to people who earn two and a half grand a month, which means that it will affect probably no League One footballers, maybe a couple of the younger players, but yeah. very few League One players will impact more smaller League Two teams and definitely non-League teams. But I can't imagine it will impact at League One and above because they'll be earning money much higher than it's in that government grant at the moment. Plus, yeah. I know from Andy Holt speaking on um, uh, on Twitter that, that none of the players are self-employed. They're all on PA, PAYE. However, the the, the 25 grand or the sorry 2500 was it yeah yeah that's going to be affecting then your more academy based players right yeah probably Probably yeah but you know what but you know and george you're interested you're right actually because two and a half grand realistically you'd think and that's monthly isn't it two and a half grand a month yeah Yeah. you would think that most league one and probably even players in our team um would be on more than two and a half grand 
but is it is it up to two and a half grand? So what I mean by that could, if for example, say player A is on four thousand a month, could we do eighty percent? Where could we still do the eighty percent, but up to the two and a half grand limit, so the clubs could still get some support? Because it, you know when we look at business, so we leave that football, to the chancellor. Yeah, yeah that's that's interesting. Interesting. all I can say is looking at other clubs not, and other well, he might teams. he might be ill. <laughs> looking at all the looking at other football league clubs in the UK and abroad and looking at other sporting industry, it appears that players, first team players anyway, are exempt from that because it's not being covered at all and they're all still in the full employment of the club, it seems, whereas it's office staff and behind the scenes and that's, um, you know, that's really important that as well we remember them, not just the existing playing staff and I think it's great to see, you know, sorry Stuart is distracting me in the chat. But yeah, I was just going to say, we have, some, we have some guests coming in. So, sorry about that, everyone. Um, you've had to sit through that song. Um, now, I, I thought maybe I was just being harsh because I'm over 50, but the uh, YouTube comments section has gone nuts with <laughs> absolutely hammering that choice of music that Jack chose. <laughs> sorry, Jack. It's your choice, mate. I mean, it's just good. Jack went to see Lil, Lil Baby in concert. When was this? Um, near the start of the season, I think. Was it? I can't, right. can't really remember, but yeah. Did you, did you go with other players or by yourself? Uh yeah, I saw a few players there. I had um Terrell and uh Felivi was there. Um They're yeah. adults. That's, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're eighteen, you can get away with this kind of stuff. Anyway, so let's move on from your music choice. Uh Anthony Wordsworth joins us live and direct from so Anthony, can we ask what town you're currently in? Oh, is he gone again? Anthony? Anthony Wordsworth, we've lost him again. Oh dear. This isn't going no. very well, is it? No. So, uh, okay, so Anthony's gone. He's left the meeting. He's not part of it. So can someone message him? <laughs> this, is going to, this is going really badly, isn't it? Okay, so let's, while we get Anthony Wordsworth back into the meeting, he's now walking outside. He's under a bridge. I wish you could see this. It's great. So, um, Sorry. Yes. Ah, no, he's good. He's back. Are you back? Sorry, my signal's a little bit there bad at the moment. That's fine. There we go. Uh, this is everyone, Anthony Wordsworth, and midfield player, number 40. Whereabouts are you, Anthony, in the world? Whereabouts in the world in terms of towns? I am at the moment, I'm at my mum and dad's house in Enfield. In Enfield? Okay. Is that your, is that, are you anywhere yeah. near Freezy Water? Freezy Water? Yes. Mm, no, I'm not too sure where that is, actually. It's, it's part of Enfield. Oh, I'm not, uh, to be honest, I don't know the area that well. Uh, my mum lives ah. um, just not far from the M25, near Cheson. Oh, okay. <clears throat> my, my former, almost soon to be ex in laws, lived in a place called Turkey Street. Their address was whatever they yeah. wrote, Turkey, Turkey Street, Freezy Water, and fantastic address. Anyway, it's the nearest railway station. I know where Turkey Street is. Oh, well, there we go then. So Anthony is in Enfield. Jack, where are you? I'm in um, Cheen. In Cheen? You're a Cheen boy. Yeah, I live in Cheam now. There you go. I was born in Cheam. I didn't know you, you were a Cheam person. There you go. This is how exciting. We're getting to know each other very well. Um, so let's let's talk briefly about what you two guys have been up to, obviously, in this enforced break. So, Anthony, how, do you, how are you keeping fit? I was wondering whether Chris, our new um, sports uh, guru, um, has given you completely different sort of fitness regimes to the other players because you think you'll come back from injury whether Jack, you have the same things, or whether the keepers have the same kind of um, fitness regime to keep themselves sort of ticking over, because we don't know how long this, this break's going to go on for. So what have you yeah. been doing to keep fit? Um, to be honest, we've all got the same fitness programme at the moment. So for myself, although I have been injured, I was training for the last three or four weeks before we actually come away from, from football. So um, we're all actually on this app where they can track everything we're doing, which is... Um, Oh. A bit of a nightmare if you don't want to do it. <laughs> but um, everyone, you know, being tracked on this app called Strava, so Chris is fully aware of what everyone's up to and um, everyone's, to be fair, been doing, been doing all their work. So can you, as well, he can keep track of everyone. Can you keep track of everyone as well? Is it just him? Yeah, yeah there's a group on there so we can all see what each other are doing. Um, mm. Although I have to admit that when I was on the train last week, um, I put my record on and it, and it says I've done a, a 45,000 mile swim. 
But <laughs> I think I think Chris figured that one out all by himself. Uh, oh, I like that. Uh, <laughs> just yeah, just uh, imagine that, that coming up. Thinking, my God, he, no wonder he's injured. He's like he's all your muscles swimming across the channel twelve times. But Jack, so, Jack what is, what's, name, name is a couple of things because I'm not, not saying none of us are, are are unfit, but we're nowhere near as fit as you guys, obviously. So. What are, you, what are you up to? As a, as a teenager, you broke into the first team. Football stops for the first time since 1939. It's incredibly unlucky from your point of view. But what are you doing in the course of a day? Yeah, like, um, like what you said, we have the app where we have to, we get tracked and we do all the running. But i um, done some indoor, indoor exercises and like some programs that some friends and friends that I know have put on. And um, in fact, I, before like, Goals and places close. I was going to do some sessions there, like, like trying to keep sharp and stuff. So that's what I've been doing. Okay. So, um, Anthony, I can ask you a question. This has bugged me since we signed you. Yep. Um, the fact that the word Wood does not appear in your surname and your nickname is Woody. How is it not Wordy or Words? How are you called Woody? This just drives me nuts. Yeah, well, this is excited. When I was in the youth team at Colchester, stuff. We we had a manager called Joe Dunn. Oh yes. Okay. Oh. And that was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing Joe Dunn was the reason. Are you still we can now see we can oh, see back. sorry. Back. Yes, sorry. Joe Dunn, the former Colchester midfielder yeah, the, he played for Cambridge, didn't he, I think as well. He did, yeah. He was my youth team manager at Colchester United. Ah. Everyone did call me Wordy because he had an Irish accent. He used to say Woody, and this literally just stuck from them. Uh, I, you know, I was really hoping it was going to be something, something quite bizarre, but it's yeah, no. it oh, quite nice. But at least for Jack, uh, your, your nickname's obvious. <laughs> Sorry, I, it's kind of trivial, but it just worried me briefly. Um, so, what do you two miss the most about the fact you've not seen each, you haven't seen your teammates and friends for, for a couple of weeks now? So, what do you, what do you miss most? Um, to be honest, uh, I, f- I think um, just the football banner. Football banner is different to the normal type of banner you have with your friends or your family. Um, although, I f- although I'm 31 years old, when I'm in the in the building, I feel like an 18-year-old just because of the way football players are doing silly things and stuff. Um, some of the stuff I do at football, I can't quite get away with with my own friends. They don't quite find it quite so funny. Fine. Okay, Jack. Yeah. Like Woody said, um, the football banner was good. Um, I miss miss um, Pigs, Wags and Woody with their banter, but um, the night is good. And obviously just the football in general, just the training and the ups and downs, but it's all part of it. So how do you cope being, being 18? How do you cope with the <coughs> banter is one of my least favourite words. But how do you cope with the banter of people like Woody and I presume Scott Wagstaff? And there's some players out there who've got a bit of character. How do you put up? Because I'm, I'd imagine... They pick on you a little bit, not because just for, just because you're you know you're young and you're in the first team, you come in bright eyed to this first team environment, and then here you are with people who've played four hundred league games. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd probably say they they give it to me a bit, but I think I take it pretty well. I, I know it's all banter and stuff, so I, I enjoy it to be fair. But um, no, it's, that's that's one of the parts I love about it. I love the team, like because because it's a it's a good good bunch of lads we all get on and um yeah the banter's top class to be fair i don't think rudy understood that you don't like the word banter he used it twice after that <laughs> it's okay <laughs> it's just a personal thing it's, i've never i've never liked, <laughs> it's just people now misunderstand because that footballers having to go at each other and being kind of like you know unpleasant but friendly at the same time to each other is banter that's what banter is people have misunderstood <laughs> But I'm sorry, isn't it, isn't it Bants now? It's not Sean, sure, isn't it? Oh, Bants. <laughs> just, just calling wow. someone in the street something unpleasant is not banter. That's being rude. Well, yeah, it's your sick, isn't it? Your teammates have to go at each other. He's <laughs> beat the oh, I didn't, didn't talk to him. Um, <laughs> so, what, okay, here's a, here's a question for you. What do you miss the least? So, I'm going to say, all right, here's two questions. Who do you miss the most? I've done what? Who do you miss the most in terms of players? What do you miss the least? Can't ask you who you miss the least. So, I know what I miss the least. It's definitely the food. The food? Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Does everyone else know <laughs> this? Is this a, just a personal thing, or is this like a, a player wide or squad wide? I think I can. I can think. I think I can speak for a few, but yeah. But um, food's not my favourite. Okay, interesting. Notes for the well. I think note for next season, whatever next season is. Maybe we can improve improve the food for the players. Woody, what do you reckon then? What what do you what do you miss the least about not training? Um, probably the train journey. Getting to training every day. I catch three different trains. That's a bit of a headache, especially with all the um all the trains being jam packed every day. Uh, it's been yeah, nice just to. Ah, you don't drive. I, I do drive, but if I drive to training, it takes me. I've got to go round the M25, and it just takes too long even to get out of where I live. So <coughs> I get the train every day. So three different trains every day, which great. And um, that explains the swimming. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I'm. I'm so is it, it's a, yeah. yeah, of course you. I was just saying. So is, um, Jack obviously doesn't like the food. Is the food that bad then, Woody? Well, I'm quite friendly with the chef Martin, so I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you go. That's where you're going wrong, Jack. See, Woody's getting all yeah. the best stuff. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so. No, we're not going to. Obviously, we're not going to ask you, Woody. Are you, are you, are you Essex based, Woody? No, no, I live in where in Hertfordshire. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. God, that's a fair old track, isn't it? Because it is, yeah. you think people don't realise that. Now, when when Danny Kedwell left us in 2011, people were heartbroken that he'd left the club because he was such a big hero for us. Then he said the reason why he wanted to leave, because he lived in Gillingham and would have to leave so early every morning to get to New Malden by half past 10 or the time he, he start. He was never able to take his kid to school. And once yeah, his child started school, he wanted to be able to take his child to school like everybody else does. And you think, okay, fair enough. Yeah, That's I know Andy, Andy Bartram was in the same boat. I know he lived quite far away and he was getting up at like half five every day and um, the journey for him was a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, I think he's, he's, he's is he Kent as well? He, he, li- he, he lives in, he actually lives in a, somewhere near South End. Oh, does he? He lives that way, yeah. And he was driving in every day with Joe Piggott, um, hmm. Pinnock and Quezzy. Uh, ha- he, he had to get up early to meet them. So he had to go over the bridge. Some days he couldn't even get in at all. I know he turned up for the Carling Cup game against West Ham at halftime, which that was uh, quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Oh, now, we've, now we know something. That's why he didn't play because we've got what? Why's Barch not playing? Oh, okay. Yeah, he turned up at half time. Because of the traffic. <clears throat> I think we've got some questions coming in. Sorry. To <laughs> yeah, no, 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 go for it. No, you just don't realise all these people are humans. Footballers are human beings with, with, with human things. And they want to take their kids to school and they get stuck in traffic. People just forget that. So um, Nick says, do you come into Berryland Station or go through Berryland Station? I come from, yeah, I come through Berrylands or if I'm, if yeah, I sometimes get on the early train and get off at New Malden and walk to the training ground. Wow. There you go. So Nick, Nick lives right by Berryland Station. So next time, give him a wave. Right, we yeah. have some questions for you both from our lovely listeners. Stu is the, in charge of the questions. Well, it wasn't so much a question. It was just, um, oh, okay. obviously, we were, talking about, we, we were talking about Jack, obviously, with the food, uh-huh. and it's quite funny. Uh, Mike Hassey has to say he should try the King's Meadow food we have to eat. <laughs> oh, the food so, you eat before the games? Yeah, 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 yeah. you should try that. So, um, um, so what's that? Actually, what's... Yeah, I have, I have actually been down there to try that food. That's, uh, have you really? It, it is quite good. <laughs> um, but no, um, lots of... Um, <laughs> Lots of um, sort of questions and stuff coming in, but we what we do, we've got some of our own questions and then we we go to the fans and, and get the other questions in for you. Well, do you want to, should we play this game? Why don't we play game number one? Okay? Yeah, go on. Man. You ready for a game? So this is, it's kind of called the yes-no game, but most of the answers aren't yes or no. Um, it's kind of yes, no, either or. So it's a number of, it's 10 questions, a simple answer, you just choose either yes or no or the options we've given you. Um, so normally we'd have only have one guest, but we've got two guests, and because of different ages, we have kind of slightly, <laughs> slightly tweaked. I'm sorry, can not We slightly tweaked the questions. So who wants to go first, Anthony or Jack? Who wants to go first? Go on, Rudy. You can go. Go on, I'll go. Right. I'll go. On. So Jack Rudoni, <clears throat> AFC Wimbledon midfield player. <clears throat> I'm asking you ten questions, and you have to answer as honestly as possible, instantly. Okay, you ready? Yes or no? Is it just yes or no? Pretty much. 
but no, it's okay. it is also either or. So if the first oh, one is okay. too okay. So here we go. Ready? Yeah. Jack Whitehall or Jack Wilshire? Jack Wilshire. Maths or English? Maths. Pepper Pig or Ben Ten? Ben Ten. Natalie Sawyer or Kirsty Gallagher? Don't have a clue. Let's go for Kirsty. Okay. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yeah, 100%. Oh, wrong. Cheryl Cole or Kimberly Wyatt? Cheryl Cole's the only one I know. Okay. Should we sack George, yes or no? Nah. Okay. Yeah, 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 I'm on three in a row. <laughs> <laughs> VAR, yes or no? Mm, no. Kings Meadow or Plough Lane? Plough Lane. Should we practice social distancing forever? Yes or no? Nah. Luton or Watford? Watford. <gasps> when, if and when you are making tea, do you put the bag first or the milk first? Bag first. Good answer. So, right. Nick, Nick, are you happy with those answers from Jack there? No. He's not happy with no. these. He's had a very bad question. The what the Luton and what for? I think you're wrong with the pineapple on pizza because that's that's no. Okay. Um right. So you're not aware of Kirsty Gallagher. I heard good. the name, but I can't. Oh, okay. oh, he's gonna he's gonna Google it after this he's radio gonna, show. No, you know. he's, he's not wasting it's criminal. His time. He's not wasting his time. He's 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 being a footballer and keeping himself to himself. I like it. It's good. Although okay. she's old now though, isn't she? Well, she's getting older. She's forty two. Aren't we all? I know that's what I thought when I first said it. I was saying that I was, I was saying that I saw. Um, did anyone see Carol Vord? <laughs> anyone see Carol Vorderman on TV this week? Yes. Amazing. A lot of work done, but amazing. I don't know how. Well, she says she's had no work done, but it's utter never, work. never. No, so, there's a construction sign under her top that shows that he's actually done the work. <laughs> um, <laughs> it says Bovis, I think. Anyway, or Buckingham <laughs> Buckingham Group has done the uh, the upper part of her. Torso. Anyway, um, but she's 60 years old, so Carol Williams. So Everything's swiftly on. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anthony Wordsworth, are you ready for these 10 questions? I am, yes. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Anthony Crawler or Anthony Costa? Anthony Crawler. Maths or English? Maths. Eurovision or Euro Trash? Eurovision. Natalie Sawyer or Kirsty Gallagher? I say both. Yep. Natalie Sawyer. Natalie Sawyer. Correct answer. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No. Also correct. Cheryl Cole or Nicole Scherzinger? Nicole Scherzinger. Should we sack George, yes or no? No. It's four in a row, well done, George. VAR, yes or no? No. Here's my favourite question South End Pier or Colchester Zoo? <laughs> Colchester Zoo. Should we practice social distancing forever, yes or no? No. Luton or Watford? Luton. And the final question, Nick is very happy now, the final question, when you're making tea, do you put the bag first or the milk first? Bag first. Excellent answer. Nick is very happy. Nick, put your top back on. We're not, not that sort of thing. But, um, <laughs> Nick is stripping off and running around, <laughs> running around his bedroom, which you can see from, the, from Berryland Station, so do watch out. Um, if you're excited again. But um, so that was great. So thanks for that. Um, so, yes, so Natalie Sawyer is the right answer to virtually every question. So, do we have any more um, listener slash viewer? You shouldn't be a viewer because what are you watching? Um, listener questions for the, our lovely players. Uh, let's have a look here. So, one of the questions here can you ask what went down? This is from Dan T. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you ask what went down with Waggy at Gillingham to trigger his passionate celebrations at the last game? I wasn't there, to be honest, but um, Rudy, Rudy can answer this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not really sure. He just did, just from the from the morning. He was just from the day before. Even he was just buzzing to. He was just really wanted to win. Like you could just see, like was, he just changed. He was just he just wanted that win so badly. And I think just his emotions came out after the game or in the game, and yeah. Because it's strange. He was really pumped up for that game. So when the winning goal went, and he was—I thought he'd scored the winning goal by the way he's running around. <laughs> yeah, one, one, 
one thing I would say is when you do play against your old club, especially when it's ended a little bit sour, how it did for him, you always want to go and win, especially on the, at their own ground as well. So, yeah, yeah. I think for, Callum to, for Callum to score and Waggy and um, Luke O'Neill to also be involved, all three of them were, were obviously really delighted with that win. Can I jump in on that then? Yeah, yeah. Because you, you had a, a Twitter bit of a Twitter, not a spat is the wrong word, but a conversation with some guy on Twitter who was a South End fan, who was yeah. like, why are you celebrating? And you replied back, I thought it was the most diplomatic answer anyone could have ever given, to be honest with you, because I would have just told him where to go. But um, did you have that kind of feeling as well? Because obviously then you, you, you left South End a bit of a unfortunate circumstances. So that yeah. win last season was certainly one thing that pumped you up. Yeah, definitely. Especially the one, the one nil when Pig scored. That was that one meant meant a lot more to me because the the way I left was was um, was quite bad, really. Chris Powell came in. I'd been offered a new contract and was a, was about to sign it. Chris Powell came in and said we'd sort it out at the end of the season. And then when the end of the season come, he sort of didn't even speak to me at all. So oh. um, for me, for me personally, that 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 win meant a lot just because I had a point to prove it to him although I got along with their fans really really well um, I wasn't actually doing it to, to wind the fans up it was just a personal thing with Chris Powell because yeah. that's funny with, with Scott Wagstaff and that Gillingham man, yeah, the, well, like, last month um, was the Gillingham fans were singing his name for most of that game it's kind of a, it's strange because you think well what's gone well clearly something has gone on but it's not with the fans because they seem to love him they didn't there was no they didn't boo Luke O'Neill they didn't boo Pig so there's, we've got quite a few players who have played for both sides um, it's, yeah, yeah, but you, know, you never know how these things end. I mean, how many, I guess, it's difficult to say, how many transfers out of 10 players that you know, how many of them have left the club on really good terms where it's just been contract ends or someone comes in, better offer, move up, versus they leave on terms that they're not happy with? Is it 50-50? Um... I'm not sure. It's hard because for when a player, when they want to stay at the club and they think they've they've done well enough to to stay there, and um, <laughs> and then a the manager obviously has a different opinion. Uh, but with with Waggy's case, I think he was a little bit disappointed more so with maybe I think some of the way the Gillingham players were acting towards him. If I remember him saying, saying uh. something like that, I think the one a few of the players were might have been having a bit of getting into his ear a little bit. So I think his anger was directed towards the players. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so so when you left Colchester to go to Southend, was that that was that was a, that was the way to leave a club? It was it was the right way to do it. Yeah, that you were happy with. I left Colchester to go to Ipswich. Yeah, I left on good Ipswich, terms. Of course, sorry, Ipswich. Yes, of course. Yeah, I left on I left on good terms, but obviously I'm leaving Colchester to go to one of Colchester's. Well, Colchester see them as a rival, whereas yeah. Ipswich, their rivals Norwich, they don't really see Colchester as a rival. So. I got a little bit of stick from some fans and we went back there to play in a pre-season friendly and I got a bit of stick. Um, and then, obviously, I left Ipswich to go to their other rival, South End, so now I've completely hated. <laughs> <laughs> You've only ever um, played teams that wear blue. That's interesting. Stu and, I, Stu and I just saw, I think, the same question. I want to ask if I'll leave it up to Stu to quickly put it down. Well, yeah, I'm just going through. Another question from Dan P. So, this is for Anthony or Woody. Has, has he ever had a less successful goal celebration, i.e. a knee slide, than the one at Rochdale last season? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I nearly, I nearly pulled my back out. Of, I had a joint come out my back there, seriously. I remember I had, to, I had to actually come off in that game. And that was what? Come off. Yeah, I was struggling. My back was killing me. But obviously, at the time, I didn't realise how I'd done it. But looking at the celebration afterwards, I think that might have been how I'd done it. That was some jolt when it when the when the ground went hard and your knee came out. That was quite a jolt, like it'd been yeah. in a car crash. If you look at the if you watch that clip again and just watch JJ Jake Jervis, he just starts cracking up. Ah. Oh yes, I've <laughs> so is, that your, is that your worst celebration, or have you had have you had any other mishaps? Oh, I've had, to be honest, I've had some I've had some bad ones. Um, I remember when that mannequin challenge came out. Soccer AM pulled me up on something I was doing wrong. Um, but I, Oh. Celebrating, I just tried to join in, but I got it completely wrong. Does anyone ever have a preset? So, do you in your head have a preset celebration? So, so you, you do weigh in with goals. Do you have a, a celebration that you think? Because do you remember what I remember when Bayo was at the club? Bayo went through a stage of having preset 
celebrations, you know, obviously as a forward. Um, do you have a preset celebration or do the players ever do the celebrations in training and stuff like that? Um, sometimes, yeah, sometimes I, sometimes I do think I, if I see something, I think I want to do that. Ru, I think Ru, Rudy, Rudy's always taking penalties and celebrating and training. I don't know. What do you do, Rudy? Me? I've got, I've, I've got a lot of different ones. Just need no, to score oh, come first. On. You've got to just do the, the Alan Shearer one hand in the air running. Yeah. No, I, th- I think if I score my first goal, I think I'll forget about all the celebration. I think my emotion will just come out. But, um, but yeah, once I get a few, then there'll probably be a few funny ones in there. So, no, one, penalty... one thing up, go on. Sorry, sorry. I was, gonna, what, what, sorry, I was just here. Things. Footballers celebrate goals. Don't mind celebrating goals, right? So, you've scored a goal for Arsenal against, let's say, Chelsea. And you run to the crowd and you stand there and you do that pose where you fold your arm and nod. Okay? That's your celebration. Lovely. What bugs me, really, is other players then join in and do the same thing when they've had no part in the goal. Don't you do it. Well, I hate that. You didn't touch the ball in that move. You scored a penalty. You weren't involved in it. Well, the subs, the substitutes run from the dugout, and then they do it. You're not even on the pitch. Why are you doing their celebration? Do your own. God. Sorry about celebrations. Sorry about Sorry. celebrations. Sorry. Sorry. Go on, go on. about celebrations, though. Obviously, now with you know, football, they're going through the old clips. And I was watching the best celebrations. And me and Nick had discussed this before, but they did the one where um, Adabayor scored for Man City uh, against Arsenal, um, the Etihad. Yeah. And he ran the whole length of the pitch. And it's just the funniest thing ever. To be fair, so much stuff is thrown at Adabayor. I'm surprised nothing hit him. Um, yeah. Yeah, just, I just wonder what went through, what went through his head. Um, the celebrations. When you, when you score, when you score a goal, it's the it's the best thing in the world, isn't it? In terms of scoring a goal, what just goes through your head? It's just, is it just a mix or like just going, just go and celebrate with the fans, or just do whatever comes into your head first? With with um, yes, yeah, scoring a goal is the best feeling in the world. And when I say the ten seconds after scoring a goal, you you actually go quite blank. You don't really hear anything or see anything. It's it's a bit mad. But going back to to what you said about added by or. Um, I'm a big, massive Arsenal fan, and when he'd done that at the time, I was obviously fuming. But when I played for Southend against Colchester and I scored in the in the derby, all game I was getting abuse. And when I did score, I'd done something quite similar. And after the game, I thought, why did I do that? That was so stupid. Like, you, sh- you shouldn't have done that. But in, in the heat of the moment, you just all you're hearing is you're getting abused all game, and then you, you score a winner in, in the eight, 88th minute. My my mind just went blank, and I and I've done the same thing. To be honest, can I quickly ask who do Jack? Who do you support? Chelsea. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that went quiet. Right, let's. Uh, yeah. That, that's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, okay. I guess someone has to. Just saying um, about um, you were saying. Sorry, Mark. Just going to say very very quickly. You know, you're talking about abuse that you were getting and stuff like that. Does that yeah. really? Does that you know you're saying it goes blank, but does that ever get you? Because I remember last season for last, I'm trying to think now. Lyle Taylor playing for Charlton, come back, got the abuse from quite a few of my friends. To be fair, and stand behind a goal, and we all knew Lyle. You know, would, would play on that. Does it really fire you up if someone's getting you on your back? Yeah. Do you feel it gives you that, or do you do things? You know, sometimes when you when you're up against it, you do things that you shouldn't be doing. Like you know, you, your mind goes blank. Does it really fire you up if you're getting abuse against you? Um, yeah, to be honest, I, I don't take it to heart. I did actually find it quite funny. Um, and if I hadn't have scored, I probably would have laughed it off. But I thought I'm going to try and make the most of this moment now to, to give it a little bit back to them. But yeah, no, it don't, it don't really upset me. It, I, I find it funny. I quite like it, to be honest. Have we got any more questions, Jim? Um, yeah, we've got some here. So uh, let's have a look. I just want to make sure I vet them before they Kieran come out. Johnson. I like his question. Sorry, Stu, to jump on. Yeah, go ahead Johnson. with that one. Yeah, what, both of you. Let's start with Jack. What's your favourite game that you've ever played in? Um, my debut, Bristol Rovers away. Yeah, yeah. I think that was that was just um, that was the best day of my life so far. Just start first start and um, getting a win as well. Just in a fresh win, one nil behind just before half time, and then. To get two in the second half, it was just a you know, perfect day. Cool. Did you celebrate like you had part to do with all the goals? And... <laughs> no, probably. Just... Did, probably did. <laughs> <laughs> Woody, what about you? Um, I'd say probably the, the, the Rochdale game for, for Wimbledon last season, just because of 
I think that was a turning point in our season. Yeah. Um, after that, after that game, I think we really started to believe that we could actually get out of uh, the mess we was in. And I think that game was massive. Just after the game, the coach journey home, that was the point I knew when, not knew, but I felt we had a really good chance of of getting out of it. Now, a couple of people on on Twitter have been talking about a couple of the players have been talking about that team talk that happened. <laughs> Can oh, I yeah. prod? And ask what that team talk was. Uh, I can't tell you exactly how it went. There was a lot no, of swearing. I don't mean but... exactly. No, don't worry about the swearing. Just, just, just yeah. It, it, it just, it's just the general. It involves Terrell Thomas. Um, Wally, Wally, Wally's going to give him a call in 2028. That's that's all I can say. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's cryptic. <laughs> that's very cryptic. Now let's find out. One day we'll find out what that was. Do you know what? I had a, I had a really strange experience that day, that Rochdale game. I didn't go to the game, unfortunately. Um, I was working at a, uh, a parking conference, would you believe, in Birmingham. And for some reason, I still don't know why this is the case, the guest speaker, the inspirational speaker at this parking conference was Fabrice Mwamba. So everyone listened to his story. And the fact that he died, you know, he died for 17 minutes and came back to life. That's just a part, tiny part of that story. It's quite extraordinary. It's the rest of it you don't know about, and he told us a story. It's just quite an emotional kind of thing to think about. <clears throat> um, and then someone said, what are, you, what are you doing now? Are you still involved in football? He said, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the youth team coach under 16s at Rochdale. Okay? So I said, oh, can I have a lift to the game then? Because I'm going to Rochdale this, this evening. I always didn't actually end up going. He said, oh, come and see me afterwards. Went and spoke to him afterwards. He shook my hand. Right? I'm, I am the least spiritual person you'll ever meet in your life. I don't have a soul, and I admit this. He shook my hand, put his other hand on my hand and said, you're, you're going to be okay. And I said, oh, thanks very much. Good to hear. I thought, why did he say that? And it just made me feel better. I genuinely felt better. I don't know whether he felt about life because I just had a pretty awful week um, that week. And then I hadn't told him I had an awful week. He just told me I'd feel better. Then we won that game. We stayed up. I think all of my good fortune until now, of course, has been due to touching the hand of Fabrice Mwamba. Genuinely. <laughs> Sounds good. Right, can we move on to the, the Paul Oshu game? Yes. If we Definitely. can. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the names of five players that this either current or former Wimbledon player has played with in his career. Um, <laughs> in no particular order, I'll give them to you. And can you try and work out who this player is? And this is All just right? Jack and Anthony, yeah? Yeah. Okay. This is just for Jack and Anthony and uh, Woody. Oh. Right. No particular order. This player has played with Callum Riley, Carly Osborne, James Hansen, Jason Ewell, and Marek Stetch. Oh. <clears throat> Who's the last player? Marek Stetch. The Czech goalkeeper who was, I'm not going to tell you what club he played for, but he's, he was Nick Woodner. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, who's Callum played for? Callum played, it's got, it's someone who's played for, I, I know the club, someone who's played for Berry. Oh, Berry. You reckon? Okay. Um, <laughs> oh. Is it J O? No, Jason Yule. The Jason Yule shots killed me. <laughs> yeah, Jason this Yule. player did play with Jason Yule. Yes. Okay. Who was Jason so which Yule's clubs? Which players? clubs did Jason Yule play for? Any ideas? I, play for I know that. Ke Kevin's Kevin's itching to answer this. I know he is. I am, but I'm not going to. Oh, I'm not involved. It's not for me. I'm keeping quiet. All right, shall I, shall I go on to who, which managers? Maybe. Let's go into managers. Yeah. He has played under Steve Lovell and Russell Slade. Is it Alex Ravel? There's a Wimbledon player. Oh, it has to be a Wimbledon player. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, current? Or former. Hmm. 
So Steve Lovell and Russell who? Slade. Russell Slade. Okay. So Steve Lovell hasn't managed that many clubs, but he did manage a club that we've just been talking about. Yeah. Near to where your in-laws live, Mark. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Russell Slade's managed loads of clubs, hasn't he? Notts County, Scarborough. He's Maybe been everywhere, hasn't he? Yeovil. Yeovil, Bradford. Was he Brighton manager? He wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Rudy's gone quiet. Rudy, you on Google? Yeah. <laughs> is is Rudy cheated? Is Rudy cheated? We can see. Don't forget, we can see, and he's not. We can see yeah, his shoulders. He's, he's either working on the world's largest computer, or he's not touching anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So this player has played with, in no yeah. given, no particular order. Yeah. Callum Riley, uh-huh. Carly Osborne, James Hansen, Jason Yule, and Marek Stech, and he has played under. Russell Slade and Steve Lavelle. I will give the final clue. Give us a clue. Final clue. Okay. Uh, if, if, if you get it, you get it. I think I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type it to Mark and see if I'm okay. right. Okay. This is the sound. He, support, he supports Leeds United. Support. Waggy. Well done, Jack. Yeah. Right, <coughs> so he played He played with Jason Yule at Charlton in 2011. Yeah. Oh, of course he did. He yeah. played in Leighton Orient with Merrick Stetch in 2012. He played Bristol City, Carly Osborne, Gillingham, Callum Riley, and at Wimbledon with James Hansen. I didn't know he'd yeah. played for Orient. Yeah, no, he I was, don't... yeah. Wow. So I was, I was I was miles off it there. I was thinking of ex players. Sorry, that's all right. Well, that was entertaining. Oh, well done. Well, well, well done, Jack. Just to say, by the way, uh, we have Terrell Thomas listening in. So, hello, Terrell. Hey, Terrell. Terrell joined us. Terrell is, Terrell is our guest on the show on Monday. So I think he's just listening in to see what he's putting himself up for. <laughs> well, Terrell, Terrell, can, Terrell, Terrell can tell you about that Rochdale story. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> we, yes. we, will, we will ask. Terrell, we're going to yeah. ask you what happened at Rochdale last, last year. Um, well, that was, that was exciting. So we do have another game. So before we, we know you've got other things to do. You've got fitness things to keep up and protein shakes to drink. And um... <laughs> Sorry, very quickly, can I quickly interrupt? Because you just reminded me of a question yeah. I wanted to post. Yeah, yeah, we have that whole social distancing thing going on because obviously with the coronavirus and whatnot. Before, were you guys able to possibly meet up and be like two metres apart and go for a run in a park? Or was that completely just said, don't do it? Um, yeah, no, I think, I think we wasn't told not, yeah. to, not to run together. I know some of the lads were running together. Uh, Mitchell, Pinnock, right, yeah. Quesley, all the Kemp boys, they were, they were running together. So, okay. um, yeah, I was, I was actually running with with someone else, one of my other mates as well. So, okay. now, we're, now we are. Sorry to have interrupted that, Kevin. No, no, no. Just, no. Uh, good, good. I was just going to say, Kev, one, one quick question before I totally forget about it. Um, this is, we were, Robbo basically asked this, asked this one. Who, who's done the best initiation? <laughs> well, one, Robbo, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> who's done the best one? He said there's a, there's a quality he's one. A good one. one. I like Chris's. Chris, Chris, the fitness coach. Yeah, yeah. His was good. Yeah, Woody's right. Um, um, yeah, Chris, Chris was. Callum hmm. had a decent voice in it. It is amazing how many footballers can't sing when you see other teams have their initiation. My God, there's some real players who've got a completely tone deaf. You can't be good at everything, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Well, brief. You, you, you do, have us. You do that when you hear the national anthems playing. And the camera goes across and then the players, you can hear each player sing a little oh, bit. Oh, I swear to God they're doing that to take the mick. I swear to God they're doing that to take the mick. I really <laughs> am. <laughs> like Michael Owen was one of the worst singers you've ever heard in your life. Michael Owen, of course, has only ever seen three films. Okay? So, uh, uh, that's true. That's not being stupid. He's seen it. Anyway, right. Films. What was the final game? The final game is what we were going to call Mr. and Mrs. But we're going to call Teammates. With a Z. So, Stu, would you like, would you like to introduce... Um, <laughs> with, a, with a Z, is that you getting in with the kids? Teammates with a Z. <laughs> okay, so, we're, we're, so Jack, you can go first. So we sent some questions over to Woody. Um, and we just want to see how well you know 
know your teammates. So, um, first question, I mean, we will do as a quiz. There's eight questions, so eight points available. So we'll see who gets the most. First one, what team does Woody support? Arsenal. Yeah. Who was Woody's favourite idol growing up? Um... Basil Brush. <laughs> For... It's got to be Triple H, isn't it? Um, any guesses? Oh, Triple H will be up there. Stone Cold. Ah. What, Wait, is what, was the, what was the next question? Um, what was the question we just done or next one? You just done the wrestling one. Yeah. <laughs> I think my um, audio went a bit. Uh, okay, so what was Woody's favourite idol growing up? Idol. Um, go for... Well, I think I think I said um, Dennis Bergkamp. If... Okay, go on. Okay. Um, next one is, what is Woody's favourite pre-match meal? Pre-match meal. Um... Pasta, pasta. I don't know, we usually have like pasta, chicken, salmon. Okay, next one. What paper does Woody read? Uh, um, mm, mm. Oh, I think his internet's going a bit slow. Yeah. The internet has died on him. Oh, here it's now, he's back. He's can back. you hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. Um, yeah, um, Daily Mail. Ooh. Ooh. How many attempts did it take Woody to pass his driving test? Uh, uh, We've lost once. Jack. What? First time. Once. First time. If, if Woody wasn't a footballer, what do you think he'd be working as? Um, do not say criminal. Comedian. Comedian. Funny Sorry, Jack. What would you say there? Stay stand-up comedian. He's, he's pretty funny. <laughs> Confident. <laughs> Who does Woody think is the worst in training at Wimbledon? Worst in training. It was definitely. Definitely Marcus Force, but um, oh. who else do you know? Um, I think you force a hard time. <laughs> uh, I will accept that as an <laughs> answer. Go for that, yeah. He's, he's, no, he's a poor trainer. Oh. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, okay, no, no, you can. yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, what's what's the question? Um, so the worst trainer, the worst trainer, it's not great. Worst, the worst trainer. Who was? Did you? Yeah, he said Marcus Force. Okay, and final question: Who would Woody say has the worst dress sense at Wimbledon? He's definitely said me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see what we got. So we got one, two, three, four. Five, five, five out of eight. Well, so there you go. Woody's, Woody's, Woody's team's Arsenal. Um, his favourite idol growing up was Joe Cole and Dennis Bergkamp. So we'll give you that one. Pre match meal, pasta, chicken, and banana. Um, actually, no, you got this wrong, actually. So it's, it's four, sorry. Um, what paper does he read? You said the Daily Mail, was it? Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, even, even the Standard. Yeah. Um, how many attempts did it take for Woody to pass his driving test? Was three. Um, if he wasn't a footballer, um, he would have learned the knowledge and been a black cab driver. Uh, worst trainer was um, Biggs. Always on the losing team and gets angry. And yes, you uh, you have the worst dress sense. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> just, for that, just for that Gucci hat, Rudy. That's it. Nothing personal. <laughs> Bless him. I think he's frozen. Yeah, I know, I know. So, it's, so that's four. So Woody, you've got four to beat. 
Okay. So here are your ones. Um, what is Jack's favourite social media app? Definitely Instagram. What, I, what item would Jack stockpile in his current situation, in the current climate? Football. Does Jack have any <laughs> pre-match superstitions? Yeah, he's got loads. He's got way too many to mention. But I'd go for the uh, the, the, the tape on his wrist. Okay. Or the eggs. Um... <laughs> What age did you join? What age did Jack join the Wimbledon Academy? Twelve. Uh, what song did Jack sing for his initiation? Oh, the, the, it's one of them stupid songs that he likes. I can I can remember <laughs> it, but <laughs> I can remember him getting up and singing because I made him get up and sing. But I, I can't remember the name of the song. <laughs> what kind of football boots does he wear? He wears the new Nike Mookie boots. What new Nike colour boots. are they? His ones are... Oh, come on, Woody. He's only in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. I can remember. I actually tried them on when he got them. They are... I think they're black and... Orange or something weird like that. What, who does Jack room with on overnight stays for away games? Um, he was rooming on his own because he wasn't old enough to room with anyone. <laughs> but now I would say... Now I'd, who are you with, Rudy? I can't remember. <laughs> it's definitely... It's either, I'm going to go Callum Bay. Okay. And finally, what is Jack's favourite Disney film? Um, Disney film. I'm going to go with Hello? Hi, yeah, we're still yeah, here. We're here, sorry, we're, we're all just here, in, in a massive anticipation for your answer. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of Disney films. Listen to Anthony Wordsworth think. That should be a radio <laughs> show by itself. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, I don't know, Shrek. Is that Disney? No. <laughs> uh, that was DreamWorks. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look. So I let's go through it. Just to get to the end of this game. <laughs> <laughs> let's go through the answers. So what was fav what's Jack's favourite social media? He's Instagram, so that's one point. Um, item that he's stockpile would be Ru Rubicon Juice Passion Fruit because he's addicted to it. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, whoa. Hold, up. Hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he's not happy with that. He's been hanging around with Callum Bay too long. <laughs> Rubicon. <laughs> I do, I'm not too sure what it is, but apparently he's now addicted to it. That's why he's still going to supermarkets for you, Jack. Um, does he have any pre match superstitions? So this is what I'm going to give you. A, I'm going to give you a point for this. I think you do. And since I've been on lockdown, I've had it. <laughs> <laughs> so the three match superstitions. Jack said, if I play well the week before, I'll try and keep it similar. I always do a prayer as I step on the pitch. And another one of the boys banned me about is because I have four poached eggs on toast before matches. Four. Four. So I'll give you a point for that. Give me neck. Yeah. Four, four poached eggs. Four. Yeah. Poached eggs. Is that is that on four? It was five. I think it was five. He's he's cut down. Yeah. <laughs> Three slices of toast. Four eggs on how many toasts? Two, two. On two. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I got two, man. Uh, so, what age did he join the Wimbledon Academy? Eleven. Um, you said twelve. What song did Jack do for the initiation? It was "Fine Wine" by Young Bain. That's it. Um, Come on, Rudy, no. Rudy, how's it go? It'll give it'll give us a go. Oh, he's pretending he's frozen now. It's better than the song you chose earlier. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just you singing that was better, to be honest. And shorter. So we've got two points so far. Uh, we've got three questions left. What kind of foot boots does Jack wear? You got one part of it right. Black and pink. 
yeah, colored colors. Um, so I'll give you a point for that. So it's three points, one more to draw, two to win. Who does he win with overnight stage for away games, which is Trots. Make yep. him drop. Of course. And his favorite Disney, Disney film is Up. Oh. So, Jack, so. you win by four points to three. Well done. Hey. Oh, 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 no, just, for the, just for the record, just for the record, can I quickly say, um, Woody, what's your favorite oh. Disney film? My favorite Disney film? Mm. Yeah, yeah, come on. He, Disney don't... Plus has just launched. Disney Plus has just launched, right? So everyone's <laughs> got to have a favorite Disney film. No. Is, what about is Coco? Is that Disney film? Yeah, it is. Well, there, there you go. That's up. That's that's a very good one. I like that one. So apparently Tyrell's saying it's actually nine post eggs, Jack. You said you're lying. <laughs> I don't know how you get nine post eggs. Um, and just very quickly, Mark Jones is saying, does Woody know the words, um, does words and the words and Wagstaff chant? Can the players pick them up or are they too busy? Yeah, yeah, I do know that one. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, what's your favourite? What's your favourite? What's your favourite chant? Do you get do you have any favourites at all? Yeah, I like a Calumbay. Oh, it's quality. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever made that up deserves a medal. That's yeah. it. I, I remember actually being on the pitch here and there. It made me laugh. Was, uh, the first time I heard that was Ip Switch Away. That was very funny. And then, yeah, it's not yeah, a song yeah. I like. It's a Backstreet Boys, isn't it? Yeah. That's, it, that's, yeah. that's the one, Backstreet Boys. Calumbay. The Ip Switch fans congratulate us on the way out of that one. Your team's rubbish, but we like your song, is what someone said. <laughs> do, you, do you know the words to a, champ- a champagne song at all? Have you heard that? How's it go? Oh, hang on. <laughs> oh, I couldn't possibly sing it. Um, but do, do you know... <laughs> come on, come on. I couldn't possibly <laughs> sing full do stop. You know, do, you, yeah. do you know our champagne song? Have you heard it? It's the most original one. I'll probably know it if, you, if, if I knew how it goes. It's, it starts, yeah. we drink... It yeah. starts, we drink champagne, we snort cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one, to be honest. Have you not? No. Okay, we'll make, sure, no. we'll make sure that's... Um, We've got one more in we've... our lives. You've got bus stops, second-hand shops, and your mum's in Reader's Wives, is how that <laughs> We drink, we drink a... Campari, we drive Ferraris, we've got... Um... One balls in our lives. Oh, yeah, so the other one's... We've got ladies every... Yeah, that's right. There we go. <clears throat> There's some... Yes, a lot of fans don't like that, because it is kind of... Um, sexist and talks about drinking alcohol. Misogynistic and 1980s, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's before. No. <laughs> they did try They did try and ban it at one point, didn't they? They did. There really? was a yeah. around saying, a lot of people were saying <laughs> it was um, you know, a song from the 1980s. But, hey, we like football from the 1980s. So, hey. <coughs> so, are you saying we should change the name to Nine Eggs Podcast? In- Nine Eggs Podcast. <laughs> in tribute, yes. A Nine Eggs Podcast. Yeah. Okay. Right. <clears throat> In that case, I think we've come to the end of our lovely section with uh, Anthony Wordsworth and Jack Rodoni. Says, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. We realise you've got other stuff to do, protein bars to eat and FIFA games to play. Um, Jack's not far off your bedtime, so I'd say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was told I had to say that. I'm, I apologise. My, my youngest son is five days younger than you, and he's not going to bed now. Um, but he, he, having said that, he does work for Sainsbury's, and he's been working every day during this crisis and keeping people fed. So I right, congratulate him. And my other son is also working in the waste disposal industry. Um, they're both working, so key workers. Lovely. Thank you, chaps. Anyway, so, Anthony and Jack, thank you very much for your time. Cheers, guys. No worries. No, no problem. No worries. We'll see you Thanks, in um, uh, some... Well, we'll see you in 2022. Some... <laughs> 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 see you in the uh, new ground Hopefully at some point this year. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Thanks. See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks Bye. for your time. Bye. Well, that was fun. Anthony Worth was Jack Rodoni, uh, our midfield pairing. In fact, my chosen would midfield pairing. I didn't say that to them because I thought it would be a bit obsequious. But on Monday, as, he's, as we just, uh, poor um, Stu has mentioned, Terrell Thomas is joining us on Monday, as well as Anthony Haskin. So that's fun. So the players are joining in. So we do, can we thank Joe Palmer as well here? Because uh, the, the reason that the players are joining us, I'm sure they, they want to, that Joe Palmer is letting them do it. And that's really nice of Joe. So thanks, Joe, for letting, letting the players loose on us and us on them. Because they know what they're getting themselves in for. We're not stitching them up. But it's still, it'd be very easy for Joe in this position to say, no, not really a good idea. But he said, yeah, it, it keeps the club 
in the fans' minds, it keeps the fans in the club's mind. It's a nice thing to do. So, also you. a big thank you to Mark Robinson, who's helping organise this and making sure we yeah. have access to players we need. Yes, yeah, so thanks. thanks to Robert. Absolutely. So, and thank you. We haven't finished yet, by the way. So don't please don't walk away. We've still got another. Uh, oh, we've got. I oh, know we've gone over our time, but never mind. It doesn't matter. Does it? So, um, we're going to have one more game in a minute that George will do. Um, so, uh, do we have what? Do we want to do? Well, let's drop a feature live. We'll drop a feature. Drop the dead donkey because that great news comedy uh, in the eighties and nineties was based on an actual thing somebody said in a newsroom in ITV. We've got, we're overrunning, what do we do? Someone said, like, drop the dead donkey, and that's why the program's called that. So do we drop our stories of the day, or do we drop what to do tonight? Stu, you, you choose. Uh, let's drop stories of the day. Drop stories of the day. Okay, so things oh, to do. Oh, man, I've got a good one as well. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you, can save, you can save it for next time. Save it for next uh. time. So things to do on lockdown Friday. Stu, what are you suggesting that you do people do tonight to keep themselves sane and safe at the same time i don't know i don't, I don't know what to do to be fair i'm still recovering from the answers from back on the <laughs> you, you, know. drop, you drop the stories of the day and then you get the question and your answer is i don't know move on move on <laughs> move on move on george what, I, what did, george knows, <laughs> do you have a chance to, no george what are you going to suggest for your what are you going to do tonight and suggesting other people do it's of course it's george of course it's sports related yeah, I think the most obvious thing to, for me to suggest anyway is tonight on Sky Sports F1, they're re-showing the German F1 Grand Prix from this from 2019 season. It was the best race I've ever seen live, so it's well worth a watch. 7.35 tonight on Sky Sports 1, or Sky Sports F1. Mark, what are you suggesting to our listeners right. that they do tonight to keep them safe and safe? You've got to bear in mind, I've been now in isolation, self-isolation for two weeks. So I'm, I'm a couple of steps ahead of you guys on this one. Yeah. So I've gone completely around the bend and I decided to buy myself two 5,000 pieces of puzzle. Wow. So I am going to sit there and I'm going to start mentally just getting my head around that. And I've got one which is insane from, from Pokemon for my son, who's a massive Pokemon fan. Mm -hmm. And the other one is um, is uh, the um, Mont Blanc mountain. Oh, wow. Uh, that's yeah, and that's going to be a really difficult <clears throat> one. So, yeah, I've, I've got myself two, two puzzles. I'm going to obviously not do them both at the same time because that'll get a bit muddling. But, I've, um, I've got a, uh, a U2 jigsaw. It's very hard to put together because a, a quarter of the pieces are the edge. Thank you very much indeed. Just thought of that. Yeah. Literally just thought of that joke now. I hadn't thought of that before at all. So thank you. I thought you were going to mention something about the part, 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 that, part that half of it hasn't actually come in the box because it didn't pay tax. Oh, that would have been a very fun. That, that's more political. Mine's more of a, a gag. But um, <laughs> yes, so there we go. You can, anyone wants to use that joke, please do take control of it. Um, <clears throat> so my thing, obviously, I'm, I'm going to stick to TV things. I'm not just watching TV. I'm working. But tonight sees the return after three years of Friday Night Dinner, one of my favourite sitcoms. It's on Channel 4 at 10pm, um, featuring one of my favourite actors, Mark Heap, who I don't know how he hasn't got awards and things. He's a fantastic actor. But Mark Heap is fantastic in that. Uh, so the return of Friday Night Dinner. Hello, Jackie. Something smells nice. Uh, followed by a new animated series from the studio behind The Simpsons called Duncanville. Now, I've, I always watch... Anything that Matt Groening has his name on. Um, Future Arm wasn't bad, was it? Not quite as good as The Simpsons. Duncanville apparently got some very good reviews in the States. So that's my thing from 10 o'clock, Channel 4, No More Last Leg, um, Friday Night Dinner, followed by Duncanville. <clears throat> now then, final game of the day before we all let you go, and then we're going to talk briefly about other people who are on the show next week. So, George, this is the birthday game. What? Now, knowing George's record, for absolutely ruining the arse out of shows, out of games here. What we want, George, is the typical thing this show has been so far. You read out the name of a famous person whose birthday it is today, and the rest of us will guess how old they are, and the person who gets it nearest is the winner. Please do not deviate from these simple rules, George. Is that okay? Well, that's spoiling the fun, Kevin. But I'll no, that's not spoiling the fun. Now. It's getting it right. Okay, so, right. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the, the well, first well, person... Yes. Birthday today. Yes. Is Jessie is Jessie J, the female yes. singer. 
Jesse J the singer. Okay, Stu, how old do you think she is? Oh, I don't know. Um, she must be close to 30s, I reckon. Actually, mm, 32. Mark? 32. Mm. I was going to say that. Um, West Ham was founded in 1895. West Ham? Uh, sorry. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Are you mouth, who's, mouth, who's mouthing the word Kidderminster? Stop it. <laughs> um, Jesse J, 29. I'm going to go with, I know I shouldn't do the same. I'm going to go with Stu. I reckon she's about 32. So I'm going to match Stu's answer, 32. George, how old is she? She is, in fact, 32. Wow. Hey! One point each. Well, actually, that's Good me start. Done. Nice one, Stu. George, okay, next. S- second on the list is the film director, Quentin Tarantino. Ooh. All right. Oh, can I pitch in? Yeah. I've been a fan of this for a long time. I'm so upset because I'm just I saw thinking. this today on Twitter. I'm going to say, I'm absolutely convinced he was born. It's my friend's birthday today, and I think they're the same age. I'm going to say he is 57 today. My friend's 57 today, but he won't be listening to this. He hates football and doesn't live in this country. Um, but anyway, he's 57. So, Quentin Tarantino, 57. Stu? Uh, Stu? Mm, I don't know. I think he might be a bit older. I think he might be 59. No, uh, 55. Okay. George, how old is correct. Hey? I'm afraid Kevin's unfair advantage has paid off. He is, in fact, 57. My unfair advice yeah. of knowing that his birthday is saying that's my friend, but anyway. Okay, yeah. <laughs> cool, next one. Okay, next on the list is Mariah Carey. Oh. She's difficult to know, isn't she? She's got so much 63. work done. 63. Put your phone down, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at messages. I'm, no I'm looking at messages. <laughs> Mark, um, what was your guess? Unless, unless, in, unless you've got a message of love, Stu. <laughs> the Mariah Carey, sorry. 63. No. No, she's not that old. I'm going 49. If if she was 50 today, we'd have heard about it by now. 49. See, she came on the scene quite early, didn't she? I reckon she's about She just looks like she's had a lot of work done. Lots of work. She's not 60, though. 46, I reckon. Okay. George? Yeah, well, none of you were right, but Kevin is the closest. She is 50. Oh, we didn't hear about it. Wow. Wow. 50 years old. Mariah Carey, 50. God, makes you feel old, doesn't it? Some of her is. Some of some are Mariah Carey. <laughs> some of her is a lot younger. How many, how many more have we got, George? Two more? We've got two more to go. Okay. And the next one is one that I'd be disappointed if Mark doesn't get right. It is Manuel Neuer. Oh. The German goalkeeper. Yeah. As opposed to Manuel Neuer, the famous violin player? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 31. 30. 30. You gonna say 31? No, hang on. First answer, I thought, was it? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'll go with it. I'll go with it. I'll stick with it. All right. 31. Mark says 31. I say 30. 34, I reckon. That's what I was going to change to. <laughs> I'm disappointed to report that Stu was, in fact, correct. It hey! is 34. <laughs> <laughs> The reason Sorry, why buddy. I knew that, the reason why I said that I, I was going to change it is because they've just signed that player from um, from uh, uh, Schalke, and he's going to be replacing Manuel Neuer yeah. probably probably in the next season and a half. So that's why I was going to go. You know what? He's ending up. To, he's coming to the end of his yeah, career, so he can't yeah. be thirty-one. No, but anyway. On, and just for the record, I hate Bayern Munich. We know. We know. <laughs> and finally, it's everyone's favourite member of the Black Eyed Peas, Fergie. Oh, so you're going to say, will I, yeah? Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas. Good. I have absolutely no idea. I'm going to say 47, because I've generally not got a clue. 47. Stu? More your kind of music. 50. 39. Okay. Okay, well... Sadly, the correct answer again is Kevin. She is 45. Wow. 45, so Kevin's the correct Her hump. Donut for me. There we go. So I think, was that a tie between me and Stu? Might have been on it. We were keeping count, which I'm sure we weren't. 
Nick hasn't. Nick is still there. <laughs> I thought by then Nick would be on the floor, comatose, looking at saying, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, okay, no, um, so, no, we're not going to do any more of those. We're, if you go look at the Daily Mirror, they do birthdays. They also do Daily Mirror readers, so it's very impossible to check how old they are. You have to guess by their name. We didn't do very well the other day, did we? we were, don't they hack phones as well? We, yes, they do. What's, what's some, yeah, another connection there. 37 years out, we were with one of them. Um, so that is it. We've overrun by a good time. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> worth it to hear from Anthony and Jack. Um, Just Monday, watching Nick have a strop. Yeah. <laughs> Monday's show. Who's, is, is, Nick having, is Nick upset? Oh, yeah. He's gone. <laughs> so Monday show we have Terrell Thomas and of course Anthony Hartigan, and during the rest of the week we have Matt Cooper, who is the uh, the playwright behind the uh, the fantastic play um, a, a Fans Club, which he's writing uh, an update of that, which he performed that a few years ago. Um, I've been reading that with him, so that's really good. I'm 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 going through it, proofreading it, um, so that's fun. We've got Hannah Kitcher from the Don's Trust board. She's going to be telling us about stuff that's going on with Don's Trust over the summer and what they're doing in terms of looking after fans. And we have uh, next, also next week, hopefully, a bit of luck, we may have, um, let's just call him the manager. Um, we have Aaron Paul, former uh, Love Sport Radio host of our show, now with uh, BBC Five Live and the BBC Asian Network. We've got all manner of guests and it's quite exciting. Uh, we also have, oh, Mark has to shoot. Bye-bye, Mark. So, Mark, Mark's got stuff to do. So, yeah, thank I'm you. really sorry, guys. We've overrun no, no, no. and everything. Thank you for thank all you so much for having me. Appreciate I'll listen Mark. to the end of the. I'll listen to the end of the the, the, the thing later on. This is it. But pretty much. Awesome chat and chatting to you guys. Thanks very much for having me. Mark Hendricks joining us live from the shores of Lake Zurich in Richtersville, Switzerland, because uh, you do have shores of the lake, not banks. So, George, thank you indeed, sir. Stuart. Thank you very much for getting those people. Thank you. Right, and answering the questions and good, good stuff. Enjoyed that. That was fun. We've got some listeners still on board, still sending in questions. We'll, we'll read out tomorrow. And thanks very much to the exasperated Nick Draper, who, because he can't speak to us, he's been <laughs> waving goodbye. We refuse to read out some birthdays. Um, so thanks very much indeed for your time, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Get through the weekend. It's the opposite way around, now, isn't it? So we have a nice, good bit of fun during the week, and then get through the weekend. Normally, other way around. But life has turned on its head in the last few weeks. So, stay safe, everyone, and stay sane, and we will join us again on Monday at 5pm in the afternoon. Cheers, guys. Thanks.